All right. All right, counselors. I think I'll call the meeting to order, being six o'clock. <laughs> Cape Breton, yeah. Uh, so thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, some of you may notice we will be live streaming tonight's meeting. The video will be uploaded to HRM's YouTube account and will be accessible to the public. The stream will be a static live shot, but I understand our PowerPoint presentations will be shared as part of the meeting's webcast. So take note that when the presentations are shared that a picture of the meeting's webcast will appear in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. This may obscure some text in the PowerPoint presentation. All PowerPoint presentations will be posted to halifax.ca tomorrow on the Regional Centre Community Council agenda page. So that's, I guess, our technical announcement. So uh, to begin, the Halifax, I want to acknowledge that the Halifax Regional Municipality is located in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq people. The municipality acknowledges the peace and friendship treaty signed in this territory and recognizes that we were all treaty people. So I guess we have to do an election of a uh, vice chair. Sorry, that was a good yeah, we had a bit of a mistake on that last time, right? <laughs> Obviously, you didn't. Uh, so we'll, we'll call for nominations. Councillor Mancini. Uh, I'll nominate uh, Way Mason. <laughs> I second. There's a second from Councillor Clary, and Way is accepting that. Are there any further nominations? <laughs> any further nominations? Last call. Congratulations, Councillor Mason. You. We do need a motion to appoint now. Oh, okay. So. So moved. A second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. So now, congratulations, Councillor Mason. <laughs> no speeches. So next, uh, approval of the minutes from December 14th. Uh, Councillor Cleary? Second by Councillor Mancini. Anything on the minutes? Saying none. All those in favor? Aye. Minutes are done. So approval of the order of business and approval of additions and deletions. There are no additions or deletions from the clerk's office. Anything from council? Seeing none, uh, can I get a motion to approve the order of business? Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. That is done. We have an um, order of business. So, business arising out of the minutes. We have none. Any conflicts of interest tonight? None. Motions of reconsideration, none. Motions of rescission, none. We have no deferred business. There are no tabled matters. Which brings us to the main reason we're all here tonight, uh, our variance appeals. So starting with 10.1.1, case 24492, appeal of variance refusal 1059 Wellington Street, Halifax. So thanks for joining us tonight, everyone, for the appeal. The process will start with a staff presentation, and uh, there'll be an uh, opportunity for questions of clarification. Oh, uh, I think you're silent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, try that again. Um, good evening, my name is Faith Ford. I am a planner with Development Services and we're here tonight to discuss variance case 24492 for 1059 Wellington Street in Halifax. Uh, so be to begin, we received a variance request for 1059 Wellington Street. Uh, it was a request to reduce the required rear setback from three meters to one meter. So the intention of this variance request is to accommodate a proposed addition to the rear of an existing two-unit building uh, to create a multi-unit dwelling that contains up to 10 dwelling units, as well as covered parking for four vehicles. The proposed addition will increase the building footprint from approximately 89.4 square meters to approximately 280 square meters. And it will also consist of an addition adding an extra story. So the building will be increasing from two stories to three stories. 
a bit of background. Um, so the zoning is higher order residential one or HR one under the regional center land use bylaw. We initially received a variance request to reduce the required rear yard setback from three meters to zero meters. Uh, so this initial request was refused by the development officer. And then during the appeal period, the applicant requested that the development officer consider a revised request to reduce the setback from three meters to one meter. So the development officer considered this revised request and then informed the applicant that the decision to refuse remain unchanged and the variance from three meters to one meter was refused. Um, so that is the variance request that was appealed um, to reduce to one meter. Uh, so a bit of context and the location, this is a map of the site. Uh, we're down here on Wellington Street. Um, there's South Street, uh, bounded by English Street, Tower Road, um, and then uh, we're further down. So south of the site is St. Mary's University, just for some context, we're out in the south end. Um, so here's the first of two images of an aerial view of 1059 Wellington Street. Um, so this is kind of a zoomed out perspective of those properties on Wellington Street, kind of showing the varying lot sizes, but kind of a consistent lot depth in the area. And the buildings and existing setbacks in this area also vary. This is a closer look at the subject property and aerial overview. Um, so it's that one in the center there in the, the red border showing the existing building. And the proposed addition will take... Um, it right down to the rear to up to one meter away from the proposed uh, or from the lot line. Um, here are some photographs of the site and the existing conditions. Uh, so as you can see, it's an existing two-story building. Um, as mentioned, it will be going to three stories uh, and the addition will be to the back. So no addition is proposed or no changes are proposed to the front kind of portion of the building. Um, and then in the picture to the left, we can see the driveway entrance um, this would be the proposed access to access that internal covered parking that's proposed. And uh, per the atrium charter, uh, notification of this appeal hearing has been sent to assessed property owners within 100 meters of the subject property. So uh, here we have our notification map just showing that notification area. Um, and as mentioned, uh, this variance request is to reduce the required rear setback from three meters to one meter. Um, here we have a site plan showing the uh, requested variance. So um, no, uh, the existing front setback and side setbacks will remain. And the requested rear setback is one meter as shown on the site plan here. And here we have a side elevation of the uh, proposed addition. So this shows the um, additional story as well as the rear portion of the addition. The existing building has a depth of approximately 11.7 meters. And the proposed addition will result in an overall total building depth of approximately 32.3 meters. Uh, so when reviewing a variance request, we review it against these three criteria. Uh, the first being whether it violates the intent of the land use bylaw, whether the difficulty experienced is general to properties in the area, or whether the difficulty experienced results from intentional disregard of the land use bylaw requirements. Um, so the first criterion is whether the proposal violates the intent of the land use bylaw. So building setbacks ensure structures maintain adequate separation distance from adjacent structures, property lines, and streets to support access, safety, privacy, and also maintain consistency of neighborhood aesthetics. Um, building setbacks also ensure appropriate siting and control the building massing and scale. So in this case, there is no uh, maximum lot coverage that's applicable to the HR1 zone, and there's no maximum floor area ratio or FAR that's applicable. Um, so the main controls of building scale in this zone would be maximum height, maximum setbacks, or stepbacks. Um, it is the development officer's opinion that this request was too substantial and does not provide adequate space or separation, um, and therefore the request is not consistent with the intent of the land use bylaw. Uh, the next criterion is whether the difficulty experienced is general to properties in the area. So on Wellington Street, lot depth is generally consistent um, amongst those properties. 
So other properties in the area will likely face similar challenges in meeting the required setback if they are seeking to construct a rear addition of a comparable size. There are no lot constraints that were specific to this property that have been considered as part of this request. Uh, and therefore it is the development officer's opinion that this difficulty is, uh, could be general to the area. And finally, um, there's whether there was intentional disregard of the requirements, and that was not a consideration in this request. The applicant has submitted a permit application and they've uh, applied for this variance prior to commencing any work on the property. Um, so there are two alternatives. Um, council may choose to overturn the development officer's decision and allow the appeal, uh, which would result in approval of the variance. Or the recommended alternative is that council uphold the development officer's uh, decision and deny the appeal, resulting in refusal of the variance. And that is all. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Now we'll go to any questions for clarification from members of council. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So can you tell me when HR1 was applied to this site? When did the conditions or the land use bylaw change in the area remind us of the of the, top of the year or that it was adopted? Um, so through the chair to you, Councillor, the package B of the regional center uh, land use bylaws, so those requirements uh, were approved in October, 2021 um, and officially came into full effect um, uh, November 20, 27th, 2021. So any application that was received after October 8th, 2021 would have needed to meet the requirements of the HR1 zone in package B. Okay, and and it, what was there before it was HR1? Do you know or do you need to call a friend? Uh, it would have been HR1 under the package A requirements. No, before it was HR1. Oh, apologies. R2A under the uh, Halifax Peninsula land use bylaw. So it was R2A. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Uh, Councillor Mancini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Faye, thanks for the presentation. Uh, being the non planning or policy geek on the panel here, uh, I have a very simple question for me to help understand this. So the standard is three meters, and you went through the three items that you're, you're measuring this against. And you talked about the first one is really the one that causes the problem, uh, access, safety, privacy, aesthetics. Can you help me understand it generally speaking, and, and why is the three meters uh, important? What are, you, what are we trying to avoid here? Can you explain that to me again? Yes, so through the chair to you, Councillor. Um, the setbacks are, they offer, a, they act as a couple um, different things. One, uh, they kind of regulate the building footprint. So um, the actual scale of the building that the lot can accommodate. And also they're intended to provide um, space for, as you mentioned, access, for example, for building services, or um, they can also act as a buffer, providing some green space or you know outdoor space for, for residents. Um, and they provide important separation between adjacent structures or property lines to ensure that there's adequate room between all the buildings and um, as well to, in terms of the neighborhood, the consistency of neighborhood aesthetics, um, the setbacks are in place to ensure that uh, generally the buildings in, in an area and within a neighborhood have similar siting. So nothing is, is too far back to the property line. They're kind of um, all the same or nothing is too close to the street. Um, so for those, those reasons. And in this case, that's those three, those areas are, that's problematic here. The development officers are looking at this and say, this, this goes against that. Is that what I'm hearing from you? Correct. So it would not be consistent with the bylaw in the sense that it does not um, align with the bylaws intent to have those minimum three meter setback uh, to ensure that there's adequate space provided. Um, the intention of the, um, the zone and the setback requirements are to ensure that all buildings in those areas meet that minimum requirement. Um, and in this case, uh, the proposal does not align with the intent to make sure that there's sufficient space and setback where it needs to be. Sure, and last question, Mr. Chair, I may. So, but we do have examples where we allow this change in variance, right? We, we do, there are examples where it is permitted that we may we make permit. adjustment. Pardon? We permit. We permit it, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Faith, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Manzini. Anything else? 
All right. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. So next step will be the applicant will have their opportunity to address us. Uh, maximum of five minutes. Um, and then after that, the any members, any assessed property owners within the notification area will have a chance to speak to us. So I just remind everyone to keep your comments, uh, no matter what you feel about them, uh, keep everything respectful. I know we'll have no problem with the gentleman at the mic uh, being a known entity to council. Go ahead, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the community council. <laughs> well, and you know, I have to take advantage of the view of Halifax, the blinds up for a moment. Uh, my name is Stephen Adams. Um, I'm here to represent uh, Jim Barsley and Carol Harrietha. Sorry, how's that? Uh, the uh, applicants for this uh, appeal. And as you see here, the, the proposal, as Faith had uh, clearly outlined, is to go from a three meter setback to a one meter setback. That would accommodate a two-unit building, uh, or a two-unit, uh, sorry, additional units on the top, plus uh, the rest of the units I'll, I'll demonstrate in a minute. There's the shameless plug. So this is the, the aspect of the uh, part on the, uh, the existing. There's going to be an extra story, right? And regardless of what happens, that will be done. <clears throat> here is uh, another picture, and, and Faith had shown this as well. The area that's circled here is what would be uh, in, or added to the uh, to the existing building or the existing proposal. So, and here side by side. So, as of right, there's seven units can be built with 12 bedrooms. With the successful appeal, there'd be six units plus an accessible unit. And with that accessible unit would be accommodations for a live-in caregiver and 16 bedrooms. And I wanna make it clear that under no uncertain terms is this going to be used as a rooming house. That is not the intent here. So this is one of, probably the most important slide that we have here this evening. <clears throat> as you can see, at, uh, you can see the existing building down here. There's a one meter setback. And Jim and Carol had built this uh, under uh, center plan A, where a one meter setback was, was appropriate. They want to build the one in the middle and add that uh, extra piece onto it, again, with a one meter setback. And it's it says, and, and as, again, as Faith had uh, clearly pointed out, that uh, building setbacks help to ensure that the structure maintain adequate separation from existing, existing structures there. Well, there's a parking lot in the back. Uh, property lines for access, um, it doesn't seem to be an issue for the existing building, which they, they've built. It doesn't, we don't believe it's going to be an issue should this be approved. Safety, privacy, and consistency of neighborhood aesthetics, it's in the back again, bordering on a parking lot. So in summary, I told you it'd be a quick one. Uh, the proposed addition with the variance will... Uh, at the same distance as the existing building, which they, they had built uh, last year. And uh, this will allow for four additional bedrooms, again, not for uh, rooming house uh, uses, but simply to add uh, more bedrooms to exist uh, to the units that are planned. And this will all allow a fully accessible unit with a, with a bedroom for a caregiver. The reason that the variance is required is for uh, slopes of the of the ramp and Jim who's an engineer a lot more letters after his name than I have can explain that if you need any further clarification okay uh, thank you Mr. Adams uh, so now we'll go to members of council if there's any questions of clarification council clear thank you Mr. Chair I, I do have a question of clarification so uh, my own experience uh, as a counselor and as a homeowner uh, with setbacks is that the, the separation is intended for a number of reasons. One, my own personal experience, my house was built 105 years ago. I'm a little closer than three feet to my neighbor. Uh, and as a result, uh, trying to scrape and paint my house, I actually have to access their property, scaffolding, ladders, the whole bit. Um, and uh, uh, as a counselor, we had a, an issue with uh, one property that came very close to the property line, developers digging down for a uh, underground parking lot and had to secure the wall next to the foundation so the house didn't fall into their property. So setbacks are really important. Uh, behind this is a parking lot. 
And I don't know, do you have any written or verbal agreement with that neighboring property owner? Because if you only have one meter, 3.25 feet, uh, any maintenance or issues you have to do to the back of the property, you may need to transverse their property. It, is there anything that you have with the neighboring property that you will be allowed to access theirs to get access to this? I'm not aware of anything. Oh, man. The but, uh, coinciding building that's there now at 1053. No, no, I'm speaking to the building where the prop, the parking lot is in the building on the other street. Where, I forget what street that is. That would be on the tower. To the east of it. Yeah, tower. tower. Yeah, that's a Metlich property, and they have the same HR1, but with a yeah. higher elevation. Than but have you had any discussions with that property it. owner to access that, to access your yeah. own building? So, you know. That same parking lot on their side is shared with 1053, and they let us have uh, common access to there when we needed to get supplies. Only for another reason, because Forbes Park is a cluster um, problem, so we had to bring in some supplies there, and they gladly let us do that. Uh, so that wasn't a problem. But what was a problem was the refer to it as the the cake box on the south side of us. Um, that has zero, uh, um, um, you know, place to work. We use the property line from there. We've been there already. We've resided there for 25 years as a, as a landlord and lived there. But um, on, on that side, um, we actually put 100-year siding on there, titanium and, and steel siding. So that's, the, and there's no windows or anything on that side or any of those outside places. And we're just trying to not have to put exterior stairs on there is the way around it is the loophole right and then have to go over there and put ladders not on there it's we've already done it last year and now this year because center plan b affected center plan a right. that's why we're here today right mm -hmm. mr should do i just Go ahead. Thank you for being liberal. Um, uh, the other question is around, because if you don't have access to the back of only one meter, um, things like uh, uh, recycling, solid waste, et cetera. So what is your plan for that for this building? We came up with, I work on this problem, is a, is, is a daily problem, but we have a solar compactor is what we're using there in that case to get not lead points in this case, but to get development points. Uh, is that with, inside the building? How yeah, it's in, the, it's in the center between the two buildings. We have a limited distance of 12 feet between the two buildings. So we got good glass uh, front each other and such without having to sprinkler in that. I mean, the building department's pretty sharp on that, but uh, yeah, that's how we got around that. And then hopefully we have a hard uh, grass and soft grass on the roof. I know you th that's in the development, you know, to that they check the boxes off. We are going to make that accessible. I know you don't need to, but they are going to have, you know, summer light and gardens and access area. And then in the future, hopefully we don't have to come back here to do it. But we were going to try to have a common patio area between the two properties. Yeah, that's okay. our that's our plan. Go forward because um, we got pretty good tenants there and we want to keep them. And even during this renovation that we built with ICF all concrete buildings. Imagine that, right? It's pretty quiet. Styrofoam blocks fill them up concrete and equal amount in cost is the steel. But I don't think there's been too many noise complaints. And we got 100 there and 100 here and 100 there watching you. So yeah, it all went pretty good. So I'm hoping it'll be even better on this project that we're doing because we do have access um, from the other side that they've already agreed to. Versus okay. the other side, the cake box, if you know which building I'm talking about on the south side, the ones Danny Trudeau built very, a lot of years ago. Yeah, that uh, we couldn't get, we, we couldn't get a machine in there anyway. In fact, we used to let them bring a scissor lift over a, a boom and reach onto their property to clean their windows and such, but they won't be able to do that anymore. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. I yeah. appreciate that. And just one, one Any other, other ooh, one last one, if I could, Mr. Chair, thank you. And, and Councillor Cleary, um, the other building that they built is a meter away. So, and yeah. there's not been issues. And that was under the R2A? That was under so center plan. Uh, that was pack J. Okay. okay. Yes. When the setback was different. Yeah. Okay. And, and they tried to, they, there was a, you know, there was, as you can see here under, uh, they had a, an issue with regard to back and forth for the building permit and it, it didn't get, they didn't get in in time under center plan and had to go to right. Okay. okay, thank you, I appreciate that. Any further questions of clarification? 
if it's all right with council, I'd like to ask uh, from the chair here. Okay, uh, I'm just curious, um, you know, looking at the site, I have it up on the phone here. Um, where your rear property line would be on this, I mean, the other two buildings on either side are quite deep as well. Um, would this match those ones or would you be going back further um, towards that property line? This might have been a question for staff, really. 53 and 59 would have similar one meter setbacks. From the rear, from their from rear the, property the, lines is this rear one? property line in the parking lot, yes. Okay. It's essentially a mirror image of that building, and they coincide with each other in the event that it used to be you needed four parking slots, so we built those underground, like, you know, before the concrete can wait. But now this new bylaw, that adjustment, well, now you don't need that anymore, which is great, but we kind of do still need it also just to add, if you don't mind me saying, not moaning about every little thing, but now these two can't coincide anymore because now it's like a little Austin Powers movie to do a five point turn. You got to back out in R1053 <laughs> that, you know, being an owner engineer kind of thing. But now we won't have that to park into those three parking spots at best if we get our other two meters. So that's what our hang up is now. Okay. And I, I had one more question. Um, the change, uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, uh, under center plan A, you were okay for what you're doing, but then we changed the setbacks in center yeah. plan B that has then uh, made this uh, not not doable under the bylaw anymore. Yes. Yeah, okay. That's the end of my questions. Uh, and if I'm going to check with the rest of them just in case I sparked anything. Nope. Okay, thank you very much thank for you, your Chair. presentation. So next, uh, I'll invite anyone uh, from the notification area that might be with us tonight. This is your chance to uh, speak to Council and uh, address your concerns. If there's anyone from the notification area. And second call. Did we hear from anyone, Ms. Clerk? Yeah, there was one. We had the one letter. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, it doesn't seem like anyone f is here from the notification area. Um, there is an opportunity for people further away if they can indicate to council how this decision uh, specifically affects them. So I'll call for that uh, at this point. If anyone from the broader community is has an interest in this. Seeing none. Okay. So, uh, we can close because the, there's nothing for the appellant to respond to <laughs> since we didn't have any speakers. Um, so motion to close. Motion to close. Okay, moved by Councillor Mason, moved by Councillor Cleary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So, uh, Council, Councillor Mason. Uh, so in accordance with Administrative Order 1, the following motion is going to be put on the floor that the appeal be allowed. Okay. All right. Moved in second. Wow, this really is the worst, right? Because there's no reason to give it to them. And there's no reason to not give it to them, basically, <laughs> right? Like that, like that's how it feels. And so, so for a little bit of history for council, under the R two A as amended in 2015, they couldn't have done the third story. So under both versions, the package A and package B, substantial additional rights have been given, which are great. Um. In fact, one of the worst things today for me to think that I'm going to vote no here, and I am interested in hearing discussion from council because, like I say, it's it's it goes both ways for me uh, in my head. I've been going back and forth through the entire presentation. Is I know the Metledges plan to redevelop all those property properties. Maybe not now. They're gener multi generational owner, but Joe has been quite clear to me that those are all going to go, and he what which is and he wants more rights than we gave him. That's another discussion for another day. But uh, you know. If we think three meters in the R HR one zone is wrong, we should have changed it or not changed it between package A and package B. Uh, and we should consider asking staff for an amendment to change it and reduce it. But we won't, won't do that because we know backyards are important, right? We know that these greens, you know, that the separation is important. So, you know, it's with some reluctance because you know I understand how we got here, and I do feel bad for for the uh, for the appellants. But 
uh, either way, they have substantially more rights than they had in 2019 before we adopted this uh, in the first place. And and I just like you know we made that rule for a reason. I don't I haven't heard a compelling case to to vary it today, uh, other than we can build a bigger building, which if that's our goal, we should make it so you can build bigger buildings everywhere in the Asia zone. I, I just don't see a specific case for this to, to, to ask council to uh, support the development officer and vote against the uh, appeal unless someone convinces me otherwise in the next couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Councillor Clary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I was 50-50 on this one uh, before the meeting and for me, it's all about context. And I think, you know, um, high order residential is not the same as established residential in the sense that you, you, you would expect backyards and you would expect, you know, those kind of things. And the, 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 the context of this site, uh, and it's not so much the precedent of the property to the south. I'm not worried about that one. Uh, it's more the Again, thinking my own personal experience as a homeowner, my experience as a counselor, the reason we have setbacks is so that you don't encumber your neighbors with the issues of your own property. And, um, you know, given what the property owner has told us and the fact that it is, regardless of whether the property owner to the, to the rear wants to redevelop or not, uh, they have setbacks that they have to consider too unless they want to come to us with the variance. Um, the, the fact that it is a parking lot and so access to the rear of the building is quite easy. Uh, for me, alleviates a lot of the concerns I would have around reducing setbacks, especially you know when I think of side yard and rear yard setbacks, you don't want to have to you know go on your neighbor's property without permission. You don't want to have to do all those things. And in this particular case, because it's a parking lot and you know the neighbor, uh, I'm okay with it. Uh, so, uh, you know, and uh, again, nothing against our process, our rules and our development officers, they have to make the decisions within the boxes we give them right. and they've made that decision. That's appropriate. So when faith comes up here and says, our uh, recommendations voted against this, I get that, but our role is one of the development officer too. And we can do whatever the development officer would have done given the context of this hearing. And based on what I've heard and what I've seen, I am comfortable allowing the variance because it still is a meter away from the property. So it does give you that three, three and a quarter feet that you can, you know, get around and, and, and do stuff. And if you need to do major things, you can ask the property owner to come up. It's a parking lot. Um, but again, I'm, I'm 50, 50. So I'm, I'm kind of, as I'm speaking, trying to figure out which way I'm, which side of the chair I'm going to fall on. And uh, maybe I'm like 52% on the side of allowing uh, the appeal. Um, and so I'm not 100%, but I'm enough that I'm comfortable saying, you know what, I, I would vote for the appeal. Uh, I'll see what other colleagues might have to say. Thank you, Councillor Clary. Any bait for Councillor Mancini? <laughs> Okay. Uh, if if folks don't mind, I'll just ask for from the chair, um, Faith. Um, I just want to reiterate the question, if I may, about the two adjacent properties. Can we bring that back up on the screen? This is the joys of being a regional council is you're at times being asked to make decisions about neighborhoods that you don't necessarily know all that well. I was hoping to bring up that aerial image that you had up in your presentation. Yes, that's yeah. exactly the one. And so are the properties either side, I mean, the long, deep buildings, um, there, how, how close are they again to the, to the property line? Um, so the property at 1053 Wellington Street, which is the one kind of to the right there, um, it's under construction in that photo, uh, is approximately one meter, I think. One meter. And then the property to the left um, is a little more than one meter, but it's um, probably about 1.5, between one and 1.5. But okay. either way, under the three meters. 
Okay. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Um, and the uh, the owners, the, they own the one under construction. Yes, I'm seeing nods. Yeah, because that was spoken about. Okay. Um, thank you. That was just that was my question. I wanted to go over. Um, oh. Okay, we're going to go back to Councillor Cleary uh, for a second go around here for some questions. For Ms. Ford, I, I don't know if you know the answer to this or not, uh, but based on the application, because you have the existing building that's there plus the addition that was going to happen, so the ad addition I think was going to be two units above, how many units would be in behind in the new addition? Do you know that? For the... Just the two story or for all three floors? For the for the addition to the east in the going behind the building. I believe it to be seven, but I would um okay. confirm with the, the bedrooms or units? Up uh, units. Okay. Sorry. Any sense from the drawings if we made them come in to the three meters, how many units would be lost? I should have asked the applicant when they were up here. You can't come back up. You know our process better than we do. Um, so through the chair, um, in terms of maintaining the proposed number of units while meeting the land use bylaw, um, there could be alternatives, whether that be um, going up an additional story. So the height maximum for the HR1 zone on this property is 14 meters. Uh, the proposed addition would bring it under 11 meters. Okay. Um, so there is room to go up. Um, and there's also room um, in the front to accommodate addition as well. The required minimum front setback for this property is 1.5 meters. And the existing front setback is, I, I believe it to be just under six meters, um, about 5.5. So uh, there could be those two options to accommodate the same number of units. Right. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cleary. Councillor Mason for a second go around. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to help out Councillor Cleary and because Steve Adams did such a great job in his presentation, if you go to page five, it says seven units and 12 bedrooms as of right. And then it says six units plus an accessible unit with 16 bedrooms if the appeal is uh, successful. So the, so the unit count doesn't change. The bedroom count changes. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Mancini. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, you know, this is interesting because it's so different from single dwelling homes when we talk about uh, you know, uh, the distance from uh, uh, from uh, each neighbor's boundary and such. And in the comments I'm hearing from my colleagues, and I look at this picture and I look at the, you know, it, it is a, to a, a, a parking lot in the back. Um, yes, though so the council area tells me that developer will make some changes and tear down what's there, but I, I don't see, you know, the, the staff are doing their job. They, they're, they, it's black and white for them. Does it follow the rules? It doesn't follow the rules. And then it's up to us to try to interpret what's the right thing to do for the neighborhood. So when, when I look at this, the parking lot in the back, um, What's the impact? What's a is there a negative impact to the neighborhood? Uh, the property owner owns both properties on either side. Is that correct? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm leaning towards allow, allowing the variance. I don't see a big enough negative impact. I don't see a lot of people lined up from the neighborhood uh, complaining about the situation. I realize the type of neighbors that are here. They're, it's not all single dwelling homes around where you most likely would hear from people if they didn't like it. Uh, so I'm leaning towards allowing the uh, variance based on that. Yeah, I, I know I have Third time? Very <laughs> minorly. <laughs> so, yeah, since I, I, I blew my one second go around just to help out Sean there, thank you. I appreciate the indulgence. So, I would just say, you know, if we think that they should be allowed to uh, touch the property lines, then we should change the zoning or to uh, core or SEN, or we should have changed HR. Like we put those rules in for a reason, right? Like the rules are there because this is, there's a different kind of intensity in these zones. And I guess the biggest thing I'm hearing in the argument is uh, right now, like there's already space behind it that they can access it, but it's like, you got to imagine this in a 25 and 50 year time frame, right? Like you like Joe could sell that tomorrow for money to somebody else who's gonna, cause he needs it for another project and somebody else could go in and do something you know, like the current conditions aren't the thing. It's what are we trying to do with the with the zone? Why are those rules there? And so if I heard a compelling reason for this one property, why this is a hardship, why we should relax it. But I, I didn't hear that. It's just it's the building's going to be bigger. And all the buildings in Asia would be bigger if we relaxed the side yards and backyards. So maybe we should have that discussion. But 
I, I don't think it's appropriate to do that through variance. So that's my last pitch. Okay, uh, if I may, just from the chair, uh, no objections. Um, I'm leaning towards allowing the appeal, and it's for me, it's the context. Um, the, with the two buildings adjacent being uh, just as deep, I don't think that this is. Uh, I, I I kind of agree with Councillor Mason. It's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. There's not really a great reason to vary the rules, but there's not a great reason not to either. Um, you know, in terms of uh, there's no one else from the neighborhood here that's upset about it. The other, the context of the other two buildings is very similar. Yes, there there could be some challenges down the line, um, but uh, you know. I think they're going to exist in any case, just given the context of this, where this is the middle building between the two. So I, I'm leaning towards uh, allowing the uh, variance at this point. Okay. Uh, yes, this is a uh, procedure. Well, so a uh, motion fails on a tie, and the motion that's on the floor for any of these appeals is always to allow the appeal. Right, so if, if it were a tie, then it would be defeated. Yeah. Okay, so. No. Disallows the appeal. Yeah. An appeal. an appeal an appeal always needs the majority vote. <laughs> okay. So, all those in favor of uh, the appeal. <laughs> all those opposed. <laughs> all right. So the <laughs> the appeal is is allowed. Thank you everyone for coming tonight and for participating. So moving along, um, I thought we had a second one of these, but clearly we don't. I think that might've just been an agenda review. Uh, 11.1 uh, 11 .1 correspondence. Uh, Ms. Clerk, do we have anything besides the submissions for this? Yes, so just correspondence was received for 10.1.1 and has been uh, circulated to the members. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, do we have any petitions from anybody tonight? No petitions. Uh, we don't have any presentations. There's no information items. We have no reports, mo no motions. We have no in camera. We have no added items. Does anyone have any notices of motion for us tonight? Seeing none. Uh, public participation. Does anyone out there want to talk to us tonight? <laughs> 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 so there's no public participation so we can't bait any of our good staff up uh so that brings us to the end so the date of our next meeting will be april 26 2023 if required uh we have a motion to adjourn from council cleary we are adjourned thank you everyone